الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد قال جل جلاله وعم نواله في كتابه المجيد والفرقان الحميد الذين كفروا وكذبوا بآياتنا أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون صدق الله مولانا العظيم قال ربنا بشان حبيبه عليه السلام إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليم الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وسلم وسلم عليه We examined uh, some verses last week in relation to Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and um, the source of his salvation um, and the journey from Jannah being the first man in space and uh, establishing that space travel isn't a new phenomena it's own technology. I often give the example, and this normally helps people, is that if I announce that I'm going to deliver a two and a half hour lecture on uh, the Nokia 3210, I doubt it if people will want to attend. However, if I say I'm going to deliver a lecture on the iPhone 16, have we got to 16 or are we still being ripped off? Uh, 14. <laughs> uh, 14. 14, we're on 14. They're, they're phasing it into you know, properly uh, uh, milk the market, properly, you know. The technology is there, it's just to, you know, milk the market. But if I said I'm going to talk about iPhone 16, which is not even, I mean, we're on 14, 15, 16, there'll be a lot of people who will attend, especially those people who mistakenly take me seriously for knowing my, the iPhone. But nevertheless, the concept is, behind this, that people are interested in new technology. They're not interested in old technology. Why, do, why would you want to know the technology of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, 10, 15 years ago? The technology in the Qur'an is so advanced that science cannot even catch up. But we look at the technology of the Qur'an as stories, myths. We don't understand it from a technological perspective. But why would Allah Azza wa Jal talk to us or infer to us about technology? Because he knows our mindset. We are turned on by technology. So he gives us examples of technology in the Quran to show that, look, your science is here and you've discovered X, but this is something that is so trivial, it wasn't even given <laughs> you know, um, uh, 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 emphasis in the Quran. It was mentioned, the inference is there, Ibi tu mina leave from here and any sensible person understands you know if, if someone says to you get out of my house and go to uh, London the inference is that you have the means to get to, the, to London if you don't have the means to get to London uh, you know why would someone say get out and go to London so ihbitu leave from here and ihbit let me just uh, emphasize some grammar here ihbit ihbita ihbitu so Ibit is you one person get out, leave, not get out, that's not respectable, it's leave, but uh, get out in the respectable way, okay, Ibita, two of you, if it was just husband and wife, then it would be two, but Ibitu is two plus, there is no mention of the quantity, but in grammar, two plus, so there were more than two, although at some junctures Allah refers to two leaving, uh, this juncture he refers to two plus, but the the plus were the subject of the hukum of the two because the order was given to the two. Uh, uh, both of you leave. So uh, any <coughs> logical, sensible person will think, well, they're in Jannah. Look where is Jannah in the Sidratul Muntaha? Where is Jannah? Look how far it is from here. How many trillions of light years? I mean. We can understand that terminology, but 1400 years ago, when you, if you talked about that, people would think you're mad. But the fact that Allah casually refers to it and doesn't give it the uh, emphasis that uh, 
uh, uh, uh, we would give it because naturally for us space travel is like oh my goodness and then space travel um, uh, uh, um, in a manner that is unassisted so there are occasions where uh, prophets have uh, endured space travel accompanied but that accompany, uh, accompanying does not mean that that is to assist them it just means that that is a protocol like Idris alayhi salam wanted to visit Jannah he, uh, uh, Israel alayhi salam came and escorted him that was an escort the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam went to the heavens it's not that he needed Jibreel or even he needed the Burak he didn't need the Burak the Burak, that, I call it protocol it was just the king of the uh, 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 heavens is coming. Right. Let him be uh, uh, escorted in this protocol uh, way. Uh, uh, a creature from Jannah. And a creature made from what? Wood? Metal? No. Today we understand what electricity is. But we only understand electricity to be energy. But we cannot manipulate that energy. But the Quran and Sunnah talk about a creature made of electricity. Burra comes from the word barak. Barak means electricity. Electricity is creation. We know electricity as a force, as an energy. But here in Jannah, there's an angel made from, there's an uh, animal made from electricity. Can you see the technology that's being talked of? So, for Alexa Ibn Tu Minha, there's no, oh my God, how am I going to get there? Where's the spaceship? You know, where's my oxygen? Where's this? No, technology. So, we talked about that uh, 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 last week. So, the Quran understands our psych psychology and it talks to us in accordance with that psychology. So, then, um, having said now leave, then Allah says, for imma, because I didn't uh, cover this last week, this segment of the verse before we move on. For imma, yatiyannakum minni hudan. Again, look at the translation. I don't know what the translators have translated there. For Imma, Phir agar tumare paas meri taraf se koi hidayat aai, jisne, so, ya'tiyannakum, ya'tiyanna, this grammar, uh, what, any English translations? So you've got, any if as is sure there comes to you guidance from me, whosoever follows my if, guidance. If, sorry, if as? As is sure. As is sure. Whose translation is that? Um, oh. I was getting scared. I thought Mr. Pickles has upgrade, been upgraded at that point. Any, 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 any uh, example of... I mean, I'm not picking on Mr. Pickles, but I mean, he was an Englishman. And ultimately, you know, he didn't have access to the grammar. And so therefore, at certain juncture, he did make a whole pickle of the translation. Yes. Uh, we said, go down from paradise, all of you, that if some guidance comes to you look from at, me. Look at, if some guidance. Yes. If some guidance comes oh, to you from if me. some guidance. You see, this Arabic, yatiyanna. This isn't just, yeah, some guidance will come. Lam ta'akid and noon sakila. I say this because some of these will go over your head and you'll think, oh, we don't know this. But for the record, lam ta'akid and noon sakila is zurur bi zurur. There's an emphasis, so that's rest assured, that translator has sight to the, so what he's done is he cloaked the zurur bi zurur into decent English. But I don't. Uh, uh, have any loyalty to decent English where emphasis is required we should be you know it's like saying indeed indeed mm. we should say that because ultimately that reflects the grammatical emphasis Allah could have chosen a very uh, 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 a very uh, um, light word but he chooses this grammar lam ta'khid al nun saqila zurur bi zurur hamari taraf se aega indeed indeed for sure that's why that translation is, uh, uh, is better nevertheless. For sure, minni hudan, guidance will come from me. And he's now talking to the whole human race. But look at the uh, essence here. He's not talking to uh, prophets. This is the uh, 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 prize. Not if you follow my guidance, I'll give you uh, 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 an ice cream. Or I'll give you 
uh, wealth of the world or I'll give you uh, X amount of this and X amount of that. Look at the, uh, 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 you know they say, the pie. This is the pie. And all the discussion of, uh, 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 preceding discussion shows you the pie that you'll get in dunya. And this is to non-profits, not to profits. The, the subject here is to profit. So this next segment of the verse is the ultimate test, litmus test, for every one of you to say, how much does the guidance that I have received impact me? Does it impact me that, that it makes me uh, rich? Does it impact me that it gives me X facility or Y facility? Or does it make me popular? No. The criteria and people just... Pa and I, I see time and time people just pass this verse, fly by and no one even talks about it. But in this, I, in this segment of the verse, verse, there is the pie. That li listen, oh Bani Adam, oh children of Adam. Guidance will for sure, for sure come from me. For man tabi'a, he or she who follows this, what will be, and this is a litmus test, you can ask yourself, I follow it, but do I, how much of the pie do I get? And the answer is, for man tabi'a hudaya, fala khawfun alayhim wala hum For him or her is no, uh, grief and no fear. Uh, you know, someone 1400 years ago wouldn't have appreciated it as we will appreciate it today. Because ultimately, our life revolves around a certain psychology. And when there is a breakdown in that psychology, we suffer depression. And the most dangerous disease is that which cannot be seen. You know, if something comes up in the MRI scan, done. Deal with it. But uh, depression is not something that can be visibly seen. It can be seen in behavior, but it can't be the subject of a scan. But why would the Creator emphasize this over all other things? He could have said, if you follow me, I will give you land. He could have said, if you follow me, I will give you uh, uh, um, X, Y, was it? No, this is the proof. So when people say, um, uh, uh, what do you get from, because the, the recipients of this, the, the, the bastions of this are non-profits and the ones who receive this the most are awliya. So Allah is now introducing the concept of wilaya. But that doesn't mean to say it's a closed shop. Every one of us is the subject of... You see, depression can be broken into two parts. There's two limbs to depression. Modern psychologists have established this. There's two limbs to depression. Number one, as in you can divide depression into what? Grief and fear. Grief relates to anxiety of the past and fear relates to anxiety of the future. It's anxiety nevertheless, but there are two segments to it, past and future. They affect our behavior in a way that we don't realize. Just think about this very carefully. Our grief and fear shapes our behavior in a way that we don't realize. Let me give you an example. Maybe this will explain it. Someone came to me and said, I did this and I did this and I did this. And I stopped her right there. I said, may I ask you a question? She said, yes. I said, have you been the subject of abuse in your early years? She said, how do you know? I said, I haven't accessed any data records of yours. I'm purely going off certain things you've said. This is not a spiritual exercise. It's a forensic understanding of what made you do certain things. She was shocked because she couldn't understand how abuse in her former years is affecting her behavior in the 30s. And especially those who are most affected are those who bottle it up. 
and as you know, child abuse is so common, but it is bottled up. For various political reasons, it's not, it's almost shameful to even talk about it. We come from a culture where if someone was to say, I was abused as a child, it would almost be seen, oh my God, you know, you've been abused. As in, there is a certain agency or a certain form <coughs> where you'll get sympathy, but, you know, people don't like to talk about these things. They feel uncomfortable. So they bottle it up. But the net effect of that is it affects their complexes. You see, the mind has three parts. I, I'm, I'm only talking from my limited understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. I'm not talking from a psychological perspective. You have the, f the front part which makes decisions. I will sit, I will stand. There is a middle part where you make decisions but you don't even think about it. Let me give you an example. Did you make a decision that you will be touching your feet? How come you're doing that? What made you do that? That's a decision. You see, so a decision was made, but there was no thinking involved. That was in the middle part. Middle, middle Earth for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> middle Earth. But then there's the third part of it. I'm just simplifying this because of what, when we come on to this and the verses come, you'll be shocked how much uh, depth there is here. Then there is the, 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 the back end where our behavior is affected. Our uh, uh, second middle part and front part is affected by complexes. Prejudices. Where those complexes come from, we have no idea. Unless someone forensically examines and says, your behavior here was attributed to this event. Who's got the time for that? Most psychologists look at therapy from a, a, a very you know, future-orientated perspective. Very few go and forensically examine. I mean, there is a culture now of doing it, but as you know, psychology is a very new... Uh, uh, area. But the reality is that no one is able to say, uh, 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 unless you know, they have the time and ability, that your behavior is affected by these complexes. But it's not just those complexes, it's your environment, it's your so uh, social circle, peer pressure, all these form complexes in the back of your mind. And that's what then triggers a decision, like prejudice. Prejudice exists, you know, no one wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to be a, a, a prejudicial person. Or no one wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to be an evil person. No one does that. There is a process that happens in the mind. And for me, the most uh, 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 interesting in this regard is the mind of a pedophile or a rapist. Because no one wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, because they know it's evil. But what turns them into that, there's a process that takes place in their mind. And of course, criminology is very advanced, but the Quran and Sunnah have given a great deal of emphasis on understanding. But what this verse says is that, look, whatever walk of life you come from, whatever your griefs and uh, uh, fears may be, Whatever your status, and this is something which uh, we have uh, uh, um, we have infused in you, Allah has infused in us this capaci capacity of depression. But when guidance comes, one of the net effect of guidance is la khawfun Go home tonight, look at yourself in the mirror, and say to yourself. Whatever guidance I've received thus far, how much khawf, fear is in my mind, in my actions, my fear, you know, uh, how much am I dictated by fear or the forces of fear? And those forces could be employment based, it could be domestic fears, which are which is a very hot spot of a fear, you know, uh, 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 um, because naturally you don't know what the uh, consequences are. And then you look at the different 
uh, uh, forums from which you are given fear. The fear that my partner will leave me. The fear that I will lose my parents. These are fears, nevertheless. And they, uh, 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 and they operate in the back of our mind and sometimes affect our behavior. Some fears are healthy. Some fears are unhealthy. The ones that are unhealthy, they breed in our, the back of our mind, the unhealthy one. The healthy fears are good, yes. Are you not oversimplifying this idea of people not wanting to talk about abuse because it is a traumatic experience? Surely the trauma makes it difficult for a person to come forward, this happened to you. Absolutely. But you see, the Quran and Sunnah emphasize that whatever you have gone through, don't bottle it, talk about it. The Quran. Qulu qawlan sadida. Be open. That doesn't mean to say, put it on the world wide web. No, if a person has been through difficulty, there must be a forum in which... Now, I ask you, and it's a very rude question, but I'm going to ask you this question. And this is to the male community. If any one of you, and I'm going to be... I'm not going to dress it up in academic language. If any of you kissed a woman, who would be the first person you tell? Okay, I'm not going to ask you that question. But on your list of people who you tell, will your local alim or imam be on that list? No. <laughs> now, let me relate this back to Hadith. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ. Ya Rasulullah! Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was on the outskirts of a city, I kissed a woman. <laughs> no shame. Why? Because... And then when Sahaba used to do things which were embarrassing, what, what, what did they used to do? They used to say... Initially they used to say, Raina, Ya Rasulullah, Raina. They you know, help us. Then the Munafiks uh, uh, um, contorted that and changed it. Raina, and Allah said, La taqulu Raina. Look at the grace. The first time Allah Azza wa Jal talks to the Mu'mineen in the Quran directly, Ya Ayyuhallazina Amanu, the first conversation which He has with us directly is about the adab of Rasulullah. <laughs> Everything starts with adab. No adab, knowledge, all of this amal is useless. La taqulu, we'll come on to that verse. La taqulu ra'ina. Qulu unzunna. And unzunna doesn't mean look at us. It means nazara, yanzuru nazara means do tawajjo upon us. So when a, I mean, how embarrassing is that? You know, let me give you another example. A woman in a crowded room of men comes to the Prophet and says, I'd like to marry you. I mean, women today would be seen, they would be seen to be dead. You know, I mean, what kind of behavior is this? And then look at the, look at the culture. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The cult, it's all about culture and how it's configured in a, in a society. The Prophet said, um, no, but there's a person in the back of the room. What do you think? He said, yeah, man. <laughs> how frank is that? No agencies, yeah. no meetups, no speed dating. I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah. I mean, how s simplicity requires that if something has happened, you channel it. You don't bottle it. So fear, because, you, and I'm not saying uh, uh, channeling it is the, uh, is the therapy, but it is the beginning of therapy. It is the... When you open that door, then that is the beginning of that journey. Where you are uh, 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 emancipating yourself from that trauma. Otherwise, you know, when you go through trauma, which we all go through, it's a bit like, the best way to give this example is, it's a bit like having a cut wound on your body. If it's not dealt with properly, and I trust good old Detol, if it's not dealt with properly, it can be infectious. And if the infection is not treated, 
then the consequences are what they are, but that infection today can then become cancerous if it's not treated. This is the sequence of the body. The same applies with the mind. Sometimes a thought process, a trauma, which is injurious to your mind, is like a cut. It happens, heals, naturally. We go through trauma. I mean, look at Palestinian children. They see trauma every day, but it's like a cut. They see children, they see, uh, uh, children being butchered in front of them. And they see, I mean, if you witnessed a murder, what was that uh, 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 um, Manchester, you know, was it Manchester United Football Club? Um, uh, you know, the, where they had the um, tragedy, huh? Hillsborough, yes. Huh? Hillsborough, no, no, Hillsborough, Liverpool. Hillsborough, oh, that was Liverpool. Oh, it couldn't have been Manchester United. So, uh, people witnessed the trauma and they made claims based on witnessing the aftermath. So the kid, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been affected by such trauma. I'm going to make a claim. And the judges entertained them. They didn't say bugger off, they actually entertained them. What, what, what is it called? The immediate aftermath where there's, the, 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 there's case law on this point. They were able to claim damages for witnessing trauma in front of them. But Palestinian children, <laughs> I say children more so because, you know, adults are so-called, they're supposed to be designed to be able to handle it. But, you know, for me, the icon of this is that video, I'll never forget till I die, even beyond that, is a father and son sitting there seeking shelter, and the son is shot in the head in front of the father. And as soon as the son is shot in the head, the father loses his sanity and condition. That's, that's trauma. So, yes. Sorry, uh, you know that you said that would you have an alim or imam with the list of someone you might confide, but isn't that an issue of trust like here? How many alims or imams would we have that degree of trust? Exactly, because the alim is regulated by contract. I will only do what I am contracted to do. You know, it's like the old, sorry, I'm just going to introduce this joke for <coughs> the likeness of it all. The alim was told in the contract, you will lead namaz six days a week, you will have Sunday off. He said, excellent. Sunday off. So Saturday night, he used to catch a train and go to his relatives in Bristol. Yeah. So, uh, uh, one Saturday night, he missed his train. Sunday morning comes, the namaz, you see the light is on in his room. He didn't used to close the light for various phobias. He didn't used to close the light of his room. So they assumed he's still there. So they knocked on the door. Imam Saab, come. It's for your time. And a voice came from him. Give me a break. It's my day off. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is, the British Raj has carefully, it's not been successful entirely, but has attempted to institutionalize ulama the way it institutionalized the church. So I will do what I am contracted to do, otherwise I'm not interested in you. Oh, I will be interested in you if you introduce Queen Elizabeth II <laughs> to the equation. And I know, you know, Beth, Beth, what is it? Betty. Betty. And I know if Betty delivers, then I, you have all my time and attention. But if you don't, and you say I'm skint, oh, I'm brother, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm not interested in you. So the, the psychology is, you know, I will give you time out of my contract if there's a you know, quid pro quo. The ulama of today, and it's not, they, they, it's not that you can blame them. You can only expect, expect what's written on the tin. When they have been manufactured, they have not been told, you are going to listen to people's problems. You are going to be a welfare a, a personality. No, they've been told, this is what the content is. Copy, paste, shut your gob. Don't think, just repeat, paste. And that's what they mean. That's what they do. I mean, I know some people, they actually read from books because they've been told, don't even think about, just read from books. Which is fine. I mean, everyone has their own way. But you see, no thinking involved. So coming back to the point that, of course, Olama won't offer that facility because they've not been... Uh, 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 a train, yes. 
Is, is the concept you're talking about, is that similar to the way the Christianity had the confession boxes and stuff? Very good point. Very, very. You see, confession is a is a is a, a an institution which Christianity inherited in the hope that this is a way of and it, to a certain degree it worked. Where it failed, confession was Father, I have sinned. The fact that I've told you <laughs> to de- <laughs> no. Yeah. Father, I have done so as long as you've said it, that's it. That concept is wrong. The concept of having that facility is right. That's correct. The confession box is co- up to there. It's right. right. But for me to say, well, I've confessed that I've you know drank alcohol and that's it. I'm redeemed. Huh? Sorry. It's uh, 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 look how the Prophet used to deal with it. Let, let, let's take it back to this one. A man came to the Prophet and he says, I've got four bad habits. I'll accept Islam if you allow me to keep these four habits. Mm-hmm. The Prophet said, what are those habits? He highlighted, he said, I'm an alcoholic. I am a womanizer and I gamble and I lie. Four habits. The Prophet said, I tell you what, let's do a deal. You give up one of them, you become a Muslim. Done. <laughs> and he said, okay, that's fine, I'll give up one. For Islam, I'll give up one. SubhanAllah. So this is what you call, you know, a, 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 a problem solving. So he said, which one would you like me to give up? He said, lying. <laughs> Prophetic wisdom. <laughs> lying. So next time he picked it up, he said, what if the Prophet asked him, what did you do last night? Then he went gambling, he said, what if the Prophet said, what did you do last night? And then he went close to him, what if the Prophet asked him? You see, one solved all four. That's what you call wisdom. So there are mechanisms of problem solving, but ulama haven't been trained. The Quran and Sunnah offer that. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 perspective but no I mean a woman comes in front of the Prophet in front of other men and says Ya Rasulullah I've committed zina (laughs) come on which woman would do that today in a crowd not one to one in a crowd she says I've committed zina a man a sahabi Hazrat Amai is a salami Alayhi rahmah Ridwan Ridwan comes to the majesty of the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, I've committed a sin. Look at the frankness. That's what the point I'm trying to make. You see, no matter what we do as humans, our honesty is our get out of jail free card. What we don't realize. No, 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 no. I've been, I've been the subject of abuse. I shouldn't talk about this. And this is not right. And you know, I've done this sin. I've done that. Right? Well, you know. Be, 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 be frank. One of the things I learned from uh, uh, my uh, mashaykh was their ability, not, forget their intellectual or academic ability, was their ability to be down to earth. You know, uh, it was like, there was no, there's so much protocol in our uh, uh, society. That we, if, I, if I say this, what are people going to think about me? But no, who, who cares? You know, it's like, very, very simple. There's simplicity in, in, in that. So I'm not going to now open a, a lecture on how to solve problems, but the point is, la khawfun alayhim walaun, and awliya were emblems of that. I often say to people who are in search of awliya, I say to them, what exactly are you looking for? And they say, we're looking for someone who performs miracles. Mm. No, people say that. So we perform miracles. I said, okay. So if someone performed a miracle, <coughs> would you consider him to be a wali? He said, yeah. I said, well, you're in trouble. Oh yes, with the bread for that, so you're in trouble. <laughs> <coughs> Why is that? 
I said, because when the Jal comes, he'll say, hey, you are, I'll give you Krama. Then dead body, come, rise. Uh, what more do you want? Come on, accept me now. Rain. Come on. <coughs> is that not Karamat? What is the definition of Karamat? Something that defies logic and, 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 and science. <coughs> what is he? So, awliya do not advertise their vilaya, but one common denominator which you will see in all awliya and those who are in their company is this. And the Quran advertises this. La khawfun alayhim wala. They have a re it's not that they don't have fear. Don't get me wrong. It's not that we don't give them fear. In fact, we give them more fear and more grief. <laughs> we give them more fear and more grief. It's like the person, and this is, it's like the person who set out to become Allah's friend. And uh, he went to a very noble friend of Allah. He says, I want to be Allah's friend. He said, well, yeah, go then. That's your journey. Just go to this city. He thought, you know, he's putting me in that direction. I'm going to go to that city. Something's going to happen. On the way, he had an accident. <laughs> he had an accident. And he lay there after the accident, looked around him. Someone's arm was broken. Someone's foot was broken. And a voice came from him. He's a very jolly fella. Uh, and a voice came, this is how we treat our friends. <laughs> He's a very jolly fellow, and he looked back and he says, I now know why you have so few of them. <laughs> if you look at the biography of Aulia, the amount of fear and grief that has been impressed upon them is phenomenal. I mean, let me give you one example, Ibrahim a.s. If you are told that you are going to be put in the fire, can you imagine your state? Can you imagine what your... What your state of mind would be, whether you will have wuzu or not. Ibrahim al Islam is going for This is not delusion. He says, yes, I'll go in the fire. That's why Allama says, Dr. Allama Iqbal, Be khatar kud pura atishe namrood me ishq. Be khatar. Without any fear. Kud pura, he dived, he was waiting. Come on, quick, 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 I'm going to die. Kud pala atishe, atish means fire, namrud me ishk, ishk dived into the fire. They say, come, come, come to me. Ishk, and what he, uh, about Akal, he says, be khatar kud pala atishe namrud me ishk, Akal hai mehre tamasha hai labe baam abhi. The Akal hasn't even got to the lips and started appraising. What are you doing? You're going to go in the fire. Before that process even takes place, he dives into the fire. Where's the fear there? Now, of course, Ambiya were the, 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 the perfect icons of this. But non-prophets, and this uh, 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 is uh, this sentence is uh, from al tabia this refers to non-prophets. So, go home today. And, and of course, awliya are the emblem of this. And here's the, here's the uh, cream on the cake. Your company of those awliya if you have firstly you cannot find anybody jalaluddin rumi says wali shanasa wali a wali can only find uh, understand um, recognize a wali yeah like a doctor can recognize a doctor yeah true an engineer can recognize an engineer a shark can recognize a lawyer <laughs> You know, common business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so, wali shanas. So people say, how can I find a wali if I can't recognize one? The rule is of the Quran and Sunnah is you never find a wali. You cannot find a wali if I, your Lord, accept that you are deserved of this honor. I will send a wali to you. <laughs> But ask me every day, Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. What is that ni'mah? It's not those people who have been blessed with dunya. It's those people who have been blessed with la khawfun alayhim wa la yazanun. So, the effect of your company should allow you to evaluate 
when I started my interaction with person X and today, let's say it's seven years, I like seven years because the guy who said to me, I've been washing dishes for seven years. Uh, in these seven years, what is the nature of interaction with this friend of Allah? And how much has that la khawfun alayhim wa la rubbed off on me? Yeah. How much of that has rubbed off on me? Now you'll understand why Jalaluddin Rumi says in his Masnavi, Yek zamana, so'bate pa'awliya, behtal az sad sala ita'ate biriya. He says, Yek zamana, one moment in the company of a wali is better than a thousand years of sajda. Why? Yek zamana, so'bate az haza, behtal az, it's better than a thousand years of sajda. Why? In that moment, he or she may infuse within you la khawfun alayhi wa Done. Your whole ibadah changes. Your whole emphasis changes. Otherwise, Allahu Akbar. And all you're thinking about is your fears, inhibitions. And, and, the, and the funny thing is that the awliya know, because the shaitan, it's not just you. The shaitan you know, emphasizes that, that when you do Allahu Akbar, he you know, makes sure that he brings those your way. Yeah, he, he, he assists in this course. It's not just you. He assists in this course. And uh, 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 um, that is why a person went to Imam Azam Abu Hanifa alayhi rahmah and he says, Dinab, well, many, you know, my wife's jewelry has been lost. Can you help? I don't have any peace at home. <laughs> she says, find it. Otherwise, don't come back home. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> he said, can you... <clears throat> now, he went to the teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa Sorry, not Imam. He went to the teacher of Imam al and he said, you know, can you help me? He said, I'm here to solve your problem. I'm here to tell you Quran and Sunnah. What kind of thing is your wife's jewelry? Well, <laughs> you go to your local Imam and say, oh, my wife's jewelry is lost. You can, you can imagine his reaction. He said, that, I didn't read that clause in my contract. If a if a muqtadi or thing jewelry is lost, I have to help in that. But no, he comes to Imam Sab's teacher and he says, "Sir, can you help me?" So he rebuked him. He says, "Get lost from here! What do you think we're we are here to 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 to, to transmit the data of the Quran and Sunnah?" And he's really disappointed. So as he's on his way home, he sees the door of Nu'man bin Sabit, Imam Abu Hanifa. <laughs> He says, let me try my, you know, people, let me try my, even though he's more junior, that, if the teacher couldn't deliver, he couldn't deliver, but let me just try my luck, knock on the door, says, sir, I've got a problem, he says, my, my wife's jewelry is gone, he says, no problem, come in, <laughs> and it wasn't that Imam Saab had, you know, some CCTV footage that he could rely on, or, or you know, sophisticated technology, or some uh, spiritual power, he said, no, come in, he said, really? He said, yeah, come in. I've got the solution from the Quran and Sunnah. He says, what? My wife's jewelry, Quran and Sunnah? I don't get the connection. Anyway, he told him what to do. He did it, and he found the jewelry. Gave him a prescription from the Quran and Sunnah. So this guy was, so you can imagine the stress he went through without the jewelry. With the lost jewelry. <laughs> you know, the Tani, the, 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 oh, you're, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> When he found the jewelry, this man was walking on class. As he was walking on class, he passed the door of the teacher. He said, what kind of teacher are you? Your student gave me uh, the uh, solution. He said, from where? He said, from Quran and Sunnah. He said, I didn't teach him that. By golly, he went and rushed to Imam Abu Nima. Oi, I didn't teach you this. Where did you get this from? He said, it was from the Quran and Sunnah. He says, so tell me. He was in rage because he said, I'm... I've scanned the whole of the Quran and so now I haven't found this. If your wife's jewelry is lost, you should do X. Yes. He said, what did he do? What did he say to him? He said, I told him to go home and after Isha, read a hundred nafal. He said, Astaghfirullah, that is bid'ah. Where does it say in the Quran and Sunnah that if you lose something, you pray hundred nafal? He says, Bid'ah. 
It is better. He said, so what happened? He said the guy only read two or three nafar and he found, he didn't have to read the hundred, he found the, uh, 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 um, the jewelry. He said, but I don't understand how. The Imam Sahib said, the guy came back to me and he said, I didn't have to read a hundred. <laughs> what a, an amazing miracle you gave me. I just read two, three. My job was done. So Imam Sahib's teacher asked, so what's this, uh, where is this in the Quran? So he said, I have studied from the Quran Sunnah that when a person engages in nafli ibadah, which is most dangerous to shaitan, he says, oh my goodness, oh, 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 oh. hundred nafal he's going to read. Why is he reading that? His shaitungra, his shaitan will say, sir, my lord, he's reading it for jewelry. He said, quickly find his jewelry. Tell him where the jewelry is. I don't want him to read hundred nafal. So shaitan did ilqa in that person after three nafal. I don't want this nuqsan. <laughs> he said, whether Rahman would do ilqa or not, Allah would do I know shaitan would... <laughs> You know, he would have to, oh, 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 100 nafal, oh, 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 what is stop this one? I can't have him read 100 nafal. Can you see? It's not just the, the raw data of the Quran and Sunnah. It's about digesting it. It's about being able to absorb it and then to extract from it. So the people of the uh, 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 people of Khaf and Huzan, they are emblems of, and they, they're, Fear and grief is not diminished. In fact, it's increased to show the higher threshold that they have been through. Um, uh, 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 in fact, there was a... Um, uh, I read this Vakit many years ago. There was a couple, both of them were awalis, husband and wife. They were both awliya. And at a certain juncture, um, the woman who was awliya asked for a divorce. <laughs> And the husband said to her, on what basis do you... She said, I'm beginning to doubt your wilaya. He said, on what basis? He said, for the past six months, you've been very, very peaceful. Allah, <laughs> 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 my doctor, but let's move on. He says on this point, I'm just going to say. He says, Sukum parasti rahib se fakar hai bezaar. Sukum parasti, that's what we are. That's what that's our life. That's what it's all about. Work, rest, and play. Sukun Prasti. We are worshippers of Sukun. We want peace. We want tranquility, not the drug. We want. <laughs> I need to clarify. You know, I don't want CPS to review this and say, well, you know, inciting the public to 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 a tranquility. Anyway, so what do we want? We want peace. We want Aram, Sukun. And Allama Dr. Iqbal says, Sukun parastiye, rahim, that priest, he, he looks at the alim, because naturally the ulama, if you do this, you will have peace. If you do this, you will have peace. If you do this, you will be a good boy. If you do this, he says, Su rahim means that alim. Sukun parastiye, rahim, se fakar hai bezaar. What is fakar? I will talk about that some other day. Fakar, a fakir is a person who practically demonstrates la khawfun alayhim wa la I think that's a enough definition for now. Yeah? A faqir is, a, a, is an emblem of la khawfun alayhim wa la yahzanun. No fear, no grief. That's a faqir. So he says, Sukun parasti ye rahib se faqar hai bezaar. Faqar hates that priest who all day talks about you do good, you'll get good, you'll get peace, this will happen, it'll all get better. He says, why? Fakir ka has safina tufani. The boat of a fakir is always in a um, tufan, in a hurricane. And he's on the boat, and that's what, you know, <laughs> today, tomorrow, this, that, and the other. It's all about problems. But does it affect him? Does it affect him? No. Does it? No. His relationship with Allah is based on la khawfun alayhim. And then it reaches a stage where there is so much informality in the relationship. La Khawfun Alayhim takes a different, let me tell you, a, a humorous t a turn to this. La Khawfun Alayhim. So a person, uh, uh, some farmers, they uh, were complaining there was no uh, rain. So they went to different ulama and different ulama gave them duas. <laughs> Nothing happened. Their crops were you know, destroyed. 
In the end, they said, look, there's a wali, a fakir, he lives on the outskirts of the town. Go to him and ask him for dua. He said, oh, fine. They went. When they went, he came out. He said, what do you want? He says, uh, sir, we would like you to do dua for uh, rain because it's, our crops are big. He says, no, 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 you've come to the wrong place. I, 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 I'm not on good terms with him. <laughs> I'm not on good terms with La Khofunale. I'm not on good terms with him. So he, they were very shocked. So, so the old alim who told them, he said, no, 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 no. Don't leave this guy. Force him to do dua. Don't leave his house. Don't leave your door. Threaten him. I'm not going to leave your door until you do dua. So that's exactly what they said. Listen, we are not going to leave your door until you do dua. For he said, well, I'm not going to do dua. You can kiss bye bye to dua. I don't have a... I'm, a bit of a tiff. So he went inside. So for several hours they sat in as darkness came in it. The island was, oh my god, what's gonna happen? They waited the whole night and the following day they were still sat there. In the end he came out in the morning, he says, You're wasting your time sat here. I've told you I, there's no use me doing the it's uh maybe they were at a point where they were going to get up. But as they were thinking about getting up and going, thinking, you need a proper time waster. <laughs> he came out, washed his clothes, put them on the line. He went back. Yeah, you wait, you're time wasters, are you? Bunch of time wasters. Look, I'm doing my domestic chores. <laughs> Am I bothered about your problem? No. I'm doing my domestic chores. <laughs> and he's mocking them. Am I bothered about your problem? No, I'm not. Look what I'm doing. I'm taking my chores. So you're wasting your time. Go away from here. As soon as he closed the door, a few minutes later, the rain came. <laughs> as soon as the rain came, he opened his door. He said, I told you. I put my clothes out to dry. He said the rain. <laughs> this is what you call friendship. When you enter that domain of friendship, then Allah. it's not about what is done or what is not done. Oh, Allah Akbar. The Prophet he says there are certain people. Oh, I don't want to open this door because this door is. Oh, he says there are certain people of Allah who walk on this earth. I swear, I Muhammadur Rasulullah swear. That if they open their mouth and say something, even if Allah has written it on the lawyer mafuz, if they say this will happen, Allah will change what is written. Yeah. Hadith of the Prophet. Who are those people? <laughs> so Adam alayhi salam is told, tell your people, oh Bani Adam, yes. But not of biggest and where I have been in previous teachings, they say that whatever karamats we talk about, our previous awliyas, they are just stories. They were great people, but all these karamats are stories because when we believe that vila is being continued and there are valis in even today's day, why the karamats are not happening? That's the basic question which they ask, which I have already answered. My question is, do today's valis not perform karamats because the jal's time is coming close? And people may fall for that trap. Look, the institution of karamats is not a sales pitch. That's what you have to understand. It's not a sales pitch that Oliya use. In fact, that in the world of Oliya, it is said that talking about the karamat they have received from Allah is like that their state of mind is like a woman talking in the public about the fact that she's going through menstruation. I mean, can you imagine how embarrassed a woman would be <coughs> openly talking about her menstruation? That's what they say in the world of Allah. They don't like to talk about this. It's like Hasna Basri. <laughs> this is a very humorous example. A person was looking for a murshid and he looked hither and there. He was looking for a karamat. Someone told him Hasna Basri is... So he, he followed him for many days looking for a karamat. In the end, he followed him one night after Isha. There was a river that divided the, uh, between Hasna Basri's house and the masjid. 
So it was a shower time. Hasnim Basri looked left, looked right. He didn't see anyone. He walked on the water and went down. <laughs> Normally, he, ordinarily, he would walk two miles and then two miles back, four miles to his home. I looked left, looked right, walked home. He said, Subhanallah, I have found a valley of Allah. In the morning, he presented a jarab. I want to be your murid. He says, Why? He said, I saw what happened last night. He said, Did you? He said, Really? He said, Yeah, come here. He took him on the side, he took his knife and he said, You tell anyone, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so, to understand karamat, you have to understand the advent of karamat. Karamat is not a sales pitch. That please believe me, ah, nabu in nabu miracles is a sales pitch, not sales in the wrong way. But Nabi says, look, what more sign do you want? I'll give you a sign. Here you are. Now accept me as a nabi. So it is a sales, but in wilaya it's not a sales pitch. But then why does karamat come? If I give you one example, you'll understand. Karamat comes in response to... There's two types of, types of karamat. The main karamats are a response to the adversary. And then there's other karamats which Allah Azza wa Jal gives and allows them to expose for ibrah, to teach, to tell people. So let me give you the, the majority. The majority is a response. There was a... Hindu in uh, 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 this is about 1100 years ago, uh, old uh, what is now known today and then it was all just Hind but what is now known today is Lord he used to, he's a Brahmin and he used to walk in the air and he used to sit in the air and look down and say any Muslims care to join me? <laughs> you know, can you imagine the, this, the, the way he would have put it any Muslims you know Levitating in the air? Anyone care to join me? And he would taunt Muslims and say, Well, there you are. What more uh, uh, Dalil do you want that Hinduism is the way of the truth? Because look, if any Muslim can join me, then. So anyway, the Muslims are very, very, uh, uh, you know. Like today, there are some Hindus who perform certain acts which are in defiance of Akal. Uh, a, a Buddhist or Hindus, whatever. So the word got round, and there was a person in that vicinity. His name was Sayyid Ali Hajveri, otherwise known as Data Saba. Ganji Bakshi Faze Alam Mazhare Nure Khuda. This is written by Azad Khaja Muinuddin Chishti Sultan al Hind, who sat for 40 days at the grave of. Sayyid Ali Hajveri, on the instruction of Rasul Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, go to this grave. If he was alive in my time, I would do bayah on his hands. This is Sayyid Ali Hajveri. That's how great he was. So then when uh, uh, Khaja Sultan al Hind, he sat uh, at his grave, he says, Ganj Bakshe, Faze Alam, Mazhare Nure Khuda, Naqisara, Pire Kamil, Kamila Ra, Rehnuma. I will talk about this Shia Samantha, it's Farsi. But anyway, uh, so Ali Hajveri was there. Sayyid Ali Hajveri. Subhanallah. Ali Hajveri. So someone went up to him and said, Sir, we are really embarrassed. I mean, he taunts us on a daily basis. He walks up by his mandal and say, looks down upon us. Is there any Muslim here care to join me? So Sayyid Ali Hajveri said, Okay, come on, let's go. So he went to the scene. Saw him levitating in the uh, air, looked at him and said, and he said, ah, so you bought another of your priests or whatever, alims. So he said to the other sub, Sayyid Ali, do you care to join me? The other sub said, no, I will join you, but first come down and then we'll go together. I he said, no problem, I'll come down. He started reading his mantra and, started, and he couldn't come down. <laughs> That's an hour now. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he couldn't come down. He was, he was, he was locked. In the end. He couldn't come down. And that's what I said. Until you do not proclaim Iman, I will not allow you to come down. Subhanallah. Initially, he thought, oh, well, he'll snap out of it. But then, when the forces of nature <laughs> arrived at his doorstep and says, you need number one. <laughs> and number two he says let me down I'll come back and we'll carry this on that's, that's it, no? 
first read Kalima. <laughs> no, he wouldn't read it until his body began to explode. Uh, on the brink of explosion, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then he says, I'll do anything, just let me come down and read Kalima. He read Kalima in front of all the Hindus. And then Nada said, Now come down. Oh, no. And when he came down, relieved himself, Nada said, Now said, Now go and do Ghusl and come back to me. And Nada said, This action you were doing, oh, you know, uh, I'll give you another example. There was a very, amongst the Ummah of the Prophet, mm-hmm. amongst the women of Oliya, one of the, <coughs> the creme de la creme, the top brass. Her name was Sayyidah Rabia Basriya. Rabia. Wow, if I talk about her, it's amazing. Her, uh, her biography is amazing if you understand who she, who she was and who she became. Uh, a woman who was sold in the bazaar. A woman who had a life being forced to pleasure men. And then coming from that background to becoming the queen of Oliya. One day, she was very renowned for her vilaya. So this really Allah had his eye on her. Very good marriage material. Hmm. So he passed her by in the jungle. <coughs> he saw her. And there was a river in between him and her. So um, <coughs> he got his musalla out. And he threw it on the water. Walked on the water. And said, Madam, my lady, do you care to join me? He's showing off his... <laughs> this is the other side of Karama. You know, where Allah allows them to use it for their own personal purpose. But not to show the public. Amongst themselves, fine. So she looked at him and she said, mm, She got her musalla, threw it in the air, walked in the air, looked down at him and said, care to join me? <laughs> and of course, he, he was very embarrassed because... Walking in the air is greater than walking on water. Anyway, she came down and they met. And uh, she said, Sir, you are no better than a duck. <laughs> and I am no better than a bird. Not the bird in this common <laughs> modern English. <laughs> you are no better than a duck. And I am no better than... A duck walks or goes on water. So what's the difference between you and a duck? And I walked... I, you know, travelled in the air. That's what a bird does. There is no magnificence in walking on water, walking. Come, let's go in the jungle and worship Allah without any expectation of reward from Him. They're not interested in what... Normally when people are initiated in the sense the the first thing they think is, uh, how many kilometers do I have? What powers am I going to get? And this is delusional. It's like the person who washed dishes for seven years. It was like... You know, it's all been a waste. So, um, uh, 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 coming back to Karama, there's two dimensions to them. One, to answer Tahut. That's why when Dajjal initiates his Karama, according to some narrations, do you know who will come out and counter him? I'm not talking about Isa al-Islam. Isa al-Islam is going to annihilate him. That's going to be fatality. <laughs> Moment fatality. But do you know who actually will come out and and, and challenge him? Exactly. Khizr. Oh, Khizr. He will come out of Medina Munawran and he will proclaim to his people, look, I can make the dead people live. Ah, the dead, uh, I can make them uh, um, live again. According to Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani has narrated this. He says, uh, he brings this hadith, that, uh, 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 and he says that this is Hazrat Khizr. He says, Hazrat Khizr will come out of Medina Munawra, in, look at, look at his, into the army camp of the Dajjal. Look at the, you know, Himmat. Now you know where Imam Hussein came from. Where, you know, hardly a match was there. But look at the Jurrat, look at the Himmat. So, he would come out and he said, you proclaim you have this power? He says, yes, I do. <clears throat> he says, then, uh, um, make me come alive. Kill me and make me come alive. I said, well, look at that, that's easy. So he will murder Hazrat Khizr. 
and then having murdered him, he will say, Qum! And Hazrat Khizr will become alive again. When he becomes alive again, then Hazrat Khizr will say, Now, kill me again. You can't kill me again. Why? You can only die once. SubhanAllah. Bas. I have now died, I am immortal. And he won't be able to kill him. He'll be, he will, I mean, he's immortal anyway, but at that ju- it shows this hadith shows that ultimately when Khizr al-Islam will meet his death but even after meeting his death he will be alive mm-hmm. so karamat where there is uh, uh, um, uh, sorcery karamat is designed to contact and I can give you so many examples of that but then there is also personal use which MPs always abuse <laughs> yeah there is a, a certain budget of karamat which Allah gives to Awliya for purely personal use, and and they use it to their to to to, to the best of their ability, uh, no, to to the be, to, to subject to their need. And that, what was that Wali uh, who used to um, ride a horse? Maruf Karhi. Hazrat Maruf Karhi. Subhanallah. Before Hazrat Rasul He used to ride, ride. He used to his means of transport was a lion. He used to ride a lion. Even now, today at his mazar. It's not allowed, but there's a statue of him sitting on a lion and riding a lion. Actually, Ghaz Park used to ride a lion, but he is renowned for riding a lion. So this person said, I want to know how he got this power. And you know, if he tells me, then I'll, I'll also be able to ride a lion. So uh, he went to, the, he asked people, where does Maruf, Hazrat Maruf, is Maruf, Maruf, Maruf. Knocked on the door, out came a woman. What do you want? What do you want? I'm looking for Hazrat Ma- You what? You're looking for who? You're looking for Maruf. Can you see where this is? Him? What do you want with him? Uh, I just want to meet him. Well, I've sent him in the jungle. He's going to collect wood for me. Can you see the turn? He's going to collect wood for me. And what's your business with him? He said, I want to seek his advice and his guidance. And then he had to clear that. He, didn't, he, wouldn't, he wasn't going to say, I want to know how he writes a lion. I, mean, I want to seek his guidance. I want to... Get... Guidance? What are you talking about? He couldn't guide me. He's a George. He's a, he's, he, he, he's a number two. I'm telling you. He does this. He does this. He does this. And he just went on, and she just went on and on and on. He does this, he does this, he does this, he does it. And she wasn't lying, she was just defaming him. You are wasting your time, sir, pursuing such a person. I live with him, I know what he's like. So don't waste your time. Go back. Now this person, well, I've clearly been misinformed about my own country. I, I thought he was, you know, all this great and whatnot. What not. Anyway, as he was disillusioned, he was heading back home, and lo and behold, he saw Hazrat Imam Karhi <laughs> riding a lion. Uh, he says, Oh, are you Imam Karhi? He says, Yes, I am. He says, Well, I came to your house, I wanted your guidance, but then it were her. <laughs> she put me off, it were her. <laughs> That's where the problem starts, it were her. The, pro- the problem was, Oh. <laughs> So, he smiled at him and said, so then, he said, well, how can you be such a great person when the person who lives with you trashes you in this way? He says, he knew why he had come. He says, but don't you see me ride a lion? He said, well, I, I know that. But her, and what she said, I can't just marry the two together. He said, but that's the whole point. It's what she says that makes me ride the lion. He says, I don't get the connection. He says, when she torments me, when she mistreats me, I do sabr. And Allah gives me ajar of that sabr. That's all it took. Absolutely. That's all it took. Sabar. He says, fine. Look, she does this, she does that. Whatever she does, I do sabar. 
Uh, yeah, I have a moan. Why not? There's, there's no harm in a good old moan. But, ultimately, what do you do? Do you plot against her? Do you say, I'm going to get my revenge? You say, no, let her carry on doing what she's doing. That's her job in life. My job is to carry on my job. But how many men do that now? Because when er plots, then e plots. <laughs> and that's all, it, that's all marriage is about. Plotting, politics. Getting one leg over the other. That's all that marriage and modern marriages are about. But where there's frankness and honesty, where a person, you know, uh, they, but Allah gave Maruf on this ground. And he said, I got this karamat on the basis of my summer. Yeah. So, you see, uh, uh, sometimes Allah gives them something, uh, what we call um, ma fokal asbab, just as a as a, as a personal favor on them. God, you can do this. Like Sayyidina Umar, the Sahaba used to do this. Sayyidina Umar used to demonstrate karamats. I don't need to go into too much detail. One letter would do the job. <laughs> the Nile. The river Nile. The governor of Egypt comes to Hazrat Umar and says, Oh Umar, we have a ritual in Egypt that until we do not push a virgin girl in the Nile full of jewellery the Nile doesn't uh, flow water is less and then it dries up so this is our yearly ritual this is a yearly ritual which the people of the Nile have been practicing for hundreds of years what does Hazrat Dhamma do? pray to Allah? what does he do? ask ulama what is written in the book? no yeah, give me a pen and paper I'm going to write a letter to who? Dear Nile. Dear River Nile. I mean, if someone wrote Dear River Th Thames, <laughs> he would be qualified under the NHS scheme for psychiatric help. Dear, he's writing a letter to a river. I mean, you wouldn't want to write a letter to Thames. I mean, it's a bit like the Ganga, one of the most <laughs> polluted waters in the world. I mean, I. I just cannot fathom how you would be purified in that muck. <laughs> you know, a person was, he was, honestly, uh, he was, I saw a clip of this, he was bathing in the Ganga and he had his mouth open oh. and he, he was chanting and there a massive prop came oh. in his mouth. <laughs> and he went, this is from Krishna. <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's, you know, people down the road, they desecrate it. They don't have any value for it. But these people believe that even if a plop lands in your mouth, it doesn't matter. Oh. This is pure. Why? It's from the Ganga. Mother Ganga, give it to us. Oh. That's fine. Enjoy. But I mean, River Nile, I mean, Nile is no order. Sorry, I had to introduce that grotesque. It's just to wake you up. But you know, the River Nile is not an ordinary river. There's two rivers on this earth that flow in Jannah. Such is the proximity of this earth to Jannah. <laughs> you know, the promise of the Yeah? Anyway, so, uh, 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 he writes, Dear Nile, he writes a letter to the uh, river. And he tells the governor, Go and throw this letter in the. I'm not going to repeat the whole work here. After that letter of Sayyidina Omar, there was never ever a need. And some latter day awliya say, Qiyamat will come, but the Nile will never ever dry up. He didn't write the same letter for the Euphrates. For Lot. Why? Because the Prophet has already said the drying of water in the Farat is a sign of Qiyamah. Anyway, I'm sorry I've just gone on a total void of void of discovery, but we as humans need to know this is our pie on this earth. The test which ultimately we have to ask ourselves is. How has this Hidayah, it's not based on, well, I read five hours a day, I read Quran, I read Vazifa, all well and good. I dress up, I've got a mitzvah in my pocket. I'm afraid it's not about semantics. It's not about showmanship. It's about being honest with yourself and saying, how much freedom from Khof and Huzm do I have? And if I sit in the company of those, how much of that from them have I inherited? And it's not, people go to 
awliya uh, uh, on the auspices of their problems being solved. But actually, the awliya and their true purpose, other than Nazanir and Ayat, their true purpose is to tame you to be able to deal with problems. So that you, you know that old expression, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, and teach a man to fish and feed him. Mm. You know, to, for them, problems are an integral part of our existence. And they teach you to, 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 to deal. But ultimately, they rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal and have to work upon Him. So, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, I can elaborate on this further for another hour, but I've got to carry on. But Allah has established this in the beginning. And this verse is the... Because a new subject is about to start. And this verse is the I say cream on the cake, which tells you you want to weigh your life, weigh it, appraise it. Don't appraise it based on your bank balance. Don't appraise it based on your uh, uh, domestic, social, political situation. Base it on this. How much khawf and huzn do you harbor? And if you, uh, 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 and if you harbor um uh uh and you read namaz and you fast and you go to hajj and you've done three and three umrahs which is now more than permissible under the new regime then something is going wrong people think i don't read namaz my problems are in fact my problems have become worse i read no the reality is the test isn't how much namaz you read of course the more the merrier but the ultimate test is How much khawf? And prophets and awliya were uh, 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 tested uh, in great ways. Then Allah says, And those who uh, uh, reject, كَذَّبُوا كَفَرُوا deny, or who cover, كَذَّبُوا and who reject آيَاتِنَا What are our signs? There are two signs of Allah. Two kinds. Actually, if you look at the word ayah in the Quran, there are many meanings. But from the this perspective, from this perspective, you have to look at the siyakus about the context. You can't just look at the physical word and say ayah means this. Shall I tell you a, a, a funny way of understanding this? It's like uh, people who understand Urdu will understand this better. So. A woman is uh, traveling and in front of her there is a man carrying her bags. Someone asks her, Ye banda kaun hai? Who is this man? She says, Mera banda hai. What does that mean? Husband, my person. Mera banda hai, he's carrying my bag. Husband. Employee. My person. Seven. You see, this is Urdu. I'll give you an example. However, if the husband is walking behind, of course, this is all distorted now. <laughs> <laughs> if a person is walking behind, someone asks him, Who is he? He's my man. You see, the sentence is the same, but the context changed when he was in front and when he was back. Mm -hmm. so, of course, this is the state 100 years ago. <laughs> now, oh, behind, in front, left, right, up top. Anyway. So, those people who reject our verses, ayatina, um, what has this been translated? Hamari ayat ki That's very helpful, isn't it? Ayatina. I mean, you go up to uh, uh, any person. Ayat. What does that mean? Aya. What does that mean? No. Here in this context, aya means two things. You have to look at the context of the word aya. Um, Lakad kana fi yusufa wa ikhwatihi ayatul lisa'ilin. 
and in Yusuf and his brothers, we made signs for those who seek. Ayatul Sa'ilin. Yeah, ayah. So there's I, uh, uh, different kinds of ayah. I mean, I don't want to go into that. That, that. That's a huge topic, the meaning of the word ayah in the Quran. But in this context, it means two things. My honorable father, alayhi rahman, may Allah, enshrine his grave with thousands and millions of rahmah, used to say there are two kinds of ayahs. One which is written, as in the Quran, and one which is a walking, talking ayah. And they are the people of Allah. Yeah. And he used to give evidence of that, and he used to say, look, Allah says in the Quran, Anna ashab al-kahfi wal raqimi kanu min ayatina ajaba says the ashab al they weren't prophets. They were awliya. And Allah says, Anna ashab al-kahfi Indeed, the ashab al-kahf wal raqimi and their dog, according to most prophets. Raqim was their dog. Kanu min ayatina ajaba were from amongst the extraordinary signs of Allah. This is Tafsir al Quran, really? Quran. Those people, and of course, prophets are <coughs> but the Jeula ayahs of Allah's, but awliya. So those people who, who reject our written verses and our walking, talking verses. That's why, sorry, I have to mention this. Because every time I read this verse, I always remember that Vakiya, which. Um, Ibn Asakir has narrated in his book of Hadith. He says, when the head, Allah, when the head of Imam Hussein was put on the end of a spear and paraded in the streets of Gufa. Here, I mean, can you imagine the the nature of their iman or lack of iman, who paraded the Head of the grandson of the Prophet on the head of a, on the top of a spear. Yeah, paraded it in the streets of Kufa. Anyway, they, because he was on top of the spear, they paraded it, and uh, on a balcony, Allah, but Aqari was reciting the Quran. And at that juncture, when the head passed him, he was reciting this verse: "Anna ashab al kafi wal raqimi kanu min ayatina ajaba." Beshak the Ashab Kahf and Rakim are extraordinary signs of Allah. As the head of Imam Hussein passed that Qari sitting on a balcony, reading Ibn Asakir narrates that the lips of Imam Hussein began to move. And he says, In the Qatl al Husseini, Kana Minhu Ajaba, the uh, martyrdom of Hussein is even a greater sign than Ashab al Kahf. So uh, uh, the awliya as a as a as a point of law of the ummah of Rasulullah are greater than the awliya of the previous nations. So the awliya of the previous nations are mentioned in the Quran. So can you imagine the caliber of awliya of the ummah? Because kuntum khaira ummah, we are the better ummah. So then, if we are the better ummah, then the awliya in this ummah are the better awliya. Anyway, waladina kafaru those people who deny wakazabu bi ayatina and reject our verses. They are people of the fire. Um in which they will have indefinite need to remain. You know that term, indefinite need to remain. So then, um, sorry, where are we on time? It's uh, one hour and twenty-three minutes. Okay, uh, we'll, 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 we'll wrap up now. So then, the ah, I think I better pause there because now. That Allah has told us, this is your, um, this is your high point. Your high point is, khaf and huzn. How you, how much you react to that, and then the fate of those who reject our signs. Now a new chapter begins of discussion, but it relates to the previous because ultimately, Allah is talking for our benefit. And then the next verse is Ya Bani Israel O oh, um, Children of Israel I'm not going to go into that Because that starts a new thing But just to say Who is Bani Israel Who is Bani Israel O oh, children of Israel This refers to Hazrat Ya'qub Ya'qub O oh, children of Yaqub, his name was Israel. Yeah, his name was Israel. Oh, children of 
Israel. Oh, children of Yaqub. Yaqub was the son of. Well, that's some homework for you to do. That's some uh, uh, homework for you to do. Yeah. So there, Yaqub, and his son was. That's very easy. I know why you know that. Uh, um, but Yaqub, you can look that up later. So, Ya Bani Israel, oh children of Israel, who is Allah talking to? He's not talking to the previous Bani Israel, he's talking to the current Bani Israel. He's talking to who? Don't worry, you won't be arrested. The Jews and the Christians. Anti Semitism, they're not Christian. Jews. Here, specifically, Jews. Why would our manufacturer, creator, take opportunity to talk about Jews? Is this not anti-Semitism? Because the moment you open your mouth and talk about Jews, anti-Semitism. In fact, forget about that, now you talk against Israel and that's anti-Semitism. So now, the idea is that, you know, you just don't talk about Jews, but the Quran talks about Jews. Why? Because the Quran doesn't talk about Jews to uh, 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 to to to, to um, desanctify them, because amongst them were good people. But this Bani Israel, uh, the subject of these verses, are two people in Bani Israel. Number one, the masses, and number two, the ulama. We'll talk about this next time. But if you could do me a favor before next uh, session. If you could read the translation of the next uh, <coughs> verses up to, I don't have a Quran, full Quran in front of me. Um, yeah. If you read up to verse number. <coughs> Uh, verse number uh, uh, 48. Just read up to there. Just read the translation and, and, and try to read Tafsir. Because when you read Tafsir, you'll see how some people of Tafsir have uh, translated this or talked about it. Yes. Uh, last week you mentioned Adam and Islam and Jannah and how he was reminded of Jannah and Islam. And you said you'd touch on. Yes. Thank you very much for that very. Um, uh, intricate question, it shows, mashallah, of your uh, uh, um, digesting the content, but also appraising that content, which of course, alhamdulillah, to me, is a sign of the success of your coming here, because ultimately, Allah Azza wa Jal says in uh, uh, Hadith al that when I want to do a favor for you, it's not about your bank balance, or it's not about your dunya. When I want to do a favor, Allah says, when I want to do a favor on you, what do I do to you? Man yuridillahu bihi khayran. When Allah wants to do good, yet every goodness that we have is from Allah anyway. When Allah says, over and above all that I've given you, man yuridillahu bihi khayran, you faqiru fi deen. I give you an understanding of my deen. So your question, they say, uh, as su'al with this full ilm. Uh, the question is half of knowledge. So, your question uh, shows that Allah Azza wa Jal wants to enlighten you with the faqahat of deen. There's what you call the knowledge of deen, that's just the raw transmission of data. But there's what you call the faqahat, the understanding. Remember when I told you about Imam Abu Hanifa, who outflanked his teacher because his teacher was a distributor of data. That's what he was, he was a data center. But Imam Sam had not only eaten that food, he had digested it. Oh yes. Knowledge is like food. I'm not going to talk about that. Anyway, so the question was, you want to just repeat the question? Yes, the question was, he, he, he was remembering Jannah and Allah Ta'ala sent Jibreel Islam to the uh, and to do the Izan. And the question was, the Izan was given to our Prophet Peace. And it's a call to prayer for our, the Ummah we're in now. So who was the Izzam done for in Jannah at that time? What was the purpose of the Izzam? And who right. was the in Jannah? Just to, uh, just to slightly uh, add a bit of thing to your question, 
the azan actually wasn't given to the Prophet ﷺ. The azan was taught to companions in their vision. I don't know dreams. They were taught. And when one Sahabi came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Last night I was taught that this is how I should call prayer. Sayyidina Omar said, oh, oops, about two weeks ago I was taught the same thing. But I didn't tell. I just was taught and I thought, well, I was taught. But now that he's told what he was taught, so someone taught him. Who taught that person? An angel. Who the angel was in their specification? An angel taught him. How would an angel teach? He must have knowledge himself. Anyway, the azan for our sharia is a call to prayer. For our sharia is a call to prayer. Why do we do azan when we go to a grave, when we bury someone? That's not a call. That doesn't mean to say, you know, in the morning you bury someone and say azan. So what's this idiot doing here? It's the whole time isn't even there. And it's not for every prayer that azan is a prerequisite. Only certain defined prayers. For example, has any, anyone ever given azan for Eid namaz? Why? Is Eid namaz um, not namaz? What's namaz? Nothing. Huh? Yes. It's wajib. According to some, it's farz. According to Anaf, it's um, uh, it's uh, wajib. No namaz, no azan there. Or when someone passes away before namaz and jenazah, <coughs> they don't say, oh, "Can you do azan?" Yet when they go and bury him, there is material which shows that do the azan. And it's not that the person doing the azan is going to read namaz. Because imagine someone burying someone at 9 o'clock in the morning. What namaz is at 9 in the morning? Do you see my point? So there are some salahs which are preceded by azan. And there are some that are not preceded by azan. Salah is salah, whether it's salatul janazah, salatul eid. It's still praying to Allah, isn't it? You still say Allahu Akbar. So it has the same denominators as Farsi Salah. But this has a mandatory prerequisite that you should do Azan. Although, in the absence of Azan, you can still read Namaz. It's not that that is a, you know, um, a far, farz, that without it you can't read Namaz. But you have to understand that Azan is a symbol, is a call to prayer. But in Jannah, there is a Sharia. But that Sharia doesn't revolve around reading the Maz. That the real objective of Azan, other than call to prayer, is to glorify Allah. <laughs> so Jannah is full of different elements which glorify Allah and His Rasul. That's why the Sharia of the Prophet came right at the end, right at the end. But Adam salam testifies that in Jannah I saw on the leaves on one side was written La ilaha illallah and on the other side was It means he was the governor even in Jannah. Yeah, there is a shri. Every This is what we must understand. This opens a new chapter which I, I don't know whether I should talk about. Every facet of this universe has a Sharia. The atom, the neutron, the electron, has a Sharia that regulates it. And that Sharia, how it regulates it, we don't know. For example, a ram put its horns into a female who was pregnant. Female ram. And the Prophet saw that and said, 
even this action will be the subject of account. So a lion won't be asked, how many? Kitne khaye? Why? Because that's his fitra. But if he's done wrong, he will be judged in accordance with his sharia. What we have to know is that every facet in this universe, whether it's Jannah or even Jahannam, has a sharia. Otherwise, there would be cohabitation in Jannah. There wouldn't be marriage. <laughs> Why do we have to have the formality of marriage? A woman would be asked, okay, you had two husbands, which one do you want? Decisions. Oh, decisions, decisions. Yes. She would say, well, why do I need Sharia? Well, why can't I have both of them? And then one, choose. This choice means that there is a Sharia. So even Jannah has a Sharia. Jahannam has a Sharia. The whole Alameen has a Sharia. That's why Allah says in the Quran, oh, Tabarak al-lazi nazzal al-furqan ala abdihi Blessed is he, Allah Azza wa Jal Tabarak al-lazi nazzal who revealed with greatness this furqan upon his servant. Why? لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَزِيرًا So he could be a nazir, a warner to the whole of the alameen. How is he a warner to this desk? How is he a warner to this microphone? How is he a warner? Because Nazir, you happy with the word Nazir? It means warner. Nazir is a prerogative of prophethood. Are you happy with that? Yes. Nazir, warning, is a prerogative of prophethood. prophethood. لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَزِيرًا So you could become the prophet for this whole alameen. Nazir for this alameen. And then your prophethood is not just limited to being nazir. Don't worry. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ They also made you mercy for the alameen. So your prophethood regulates every facet of this alameen. It even regulates Jannah. And so therefore... An azan in Jannah is not a call for prayer, it is the proclamation of the glory of Allah and His Rasulullah. I hope that assists your quest. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is a question that we could go into detail more. About. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, sorry, in the back. So you mentioned about the Lord of the Rings, so many uh, bits from the Quran and Yes. If ever I were to sit with you, and go through it, I will show you at every juncture. I mean, if there's a BA honors degree in Potterology, mm -hmm. a, 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 a drama which uh, talks about sorcery and goodness of sorcery, the good sorcerer and the bad sorcerer. I mean, that's like saying, um, your wuzu broke greater than mine. <laughs> It's like the student who graduated and the, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just telling this joke just to uh, lighten the load. Uh, he graduated and all his teachers were stood there and they said, right, well, today you're going to leave the namaz. And he thought, oh my God, all my teachers are behind me. Oh, 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 oh. Allah, what, what all he was thinking about, if I make a mistake, they're going to grill me. They're going to fry me, as they say in Bradford. They're going to fry me. And all he could think of was, and he was under so much pressure, he read Salah. Perfect! But in the end, he did say that's half. <laughs> One of his ustad pulled him and said, but, Beta, your namaz was perfect. Why did you say that's half? He said, Hazrat, thodi si pusi ni. Maamuli si pusi ni. But what he didn't realize is whether it's maamuli si, <laughs> Or oh, whether it's barbaric, <laughs> it makes no difference. You see, wuzu is wuzu, it breaks. So where did I come from from this? Just remind me. Uh, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. So sorcery is nijasa. It's an impurity. Whether you do a little bit or whether you do a lot. 
There's no such a thing as pure sorcery. There's no such a thing as good sorcery. But you see how they are sales pitching it by saying there is a concept of good sorcery. Do you see how Hollywood has manufactured over a course of many, many years, eroded marriage by making every uh, film, every other film, uh, 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 establish that it is quite normal to live without marriage. You see. So, th these movies are designed to indoctrinate us, but Lord of the Rings, because you specifically raised Lord of the Rings, this is a classic Freemasonic film, which shows and which educates the, 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 the um, not the listener, the audience, that Listen, we know certain secrets, and we are showing it to you in the way of entertainment. So in a certain part, there's a gin. There's a gin. But of course, we don't connect the two together. So, there is so much content in there which they have adopted on purpose. You know, Gandalf doesn't just, you know, become Gandalf, and he doesn't just have a beard. He could come in jeans. But why is Gandalf dressed in the way that he is? You see, and um, uh, and and that what's a small one? Gollum. Master, what's his name? Gollum. Yeah, Gollum. Gollum is a symbol of a certain jinn. They are jinnat who are tiny, the dwarves, and they are able to have physical form. Ah. No, 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 Yajuj Majuj is the army. Yajuj Majuj is the army. And the one eye which corrupts Saruman. The corruption of Saruman. Who is on the good side, who goes in the dark, dark, dark side. But of course, Gandalf stands his ground. You see, there's so much. I mean, I could, if I was playing it with you, I'd be pausing it every two minutes. Or every minute, you'd probably get fed up and leave. Say, give us a break, let's see it first. But there's so much content there. There is, but above all, I mean, the, name, the title tells you it all. Lord of the Rings. What is a ring? In fact, there's a, in fact, there's a new one out, isn't there? Yeah. What's that called? Oh. Rings. Ah. You see how it flows. First, we were told there's only one ring, and now we're saying there's rings. This is the confiscated material which Suleiman alayhisalam put under his <coughs> which some believe Queen Elizabeth sits on. <laughs> oh yeah. They think she's nicked it. Well, they, no, she didn't personally nick it. They think the one that she sits on in the House of Lords, that's the throne of Solomon. They think. But, maybe. Anyway, I can tell you, number two. Yeah. <laughs> the, the real throne, and this is why they want to demolish Masjid Iqsa. Not because they want to preserve the Temple of Solomon, because they know in that temple, is his throne, and under the throne is the rings of power. Because the bangles of the Hazrat Sulaiman confiscated that sorcery, mark my words, he confiscated the sorcery which was injected in jewelry. I wonder if they have, they've got as far as, so they started with ring, and now they've gone on to rings. Maybe, maybe down the line, whether we live to see it or not, there may be bandits. Because ultimately, a jewelry does not, you can ask any woman, woman a jewelry does not consist only of rings. There's going to be other parts to it. And the ultimate jewelry, even though it's not out of fashion at the moment, is the crown. Hmm. Oh, yes. I, 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 I once. Uh, many, many years ago, I saw this woman wear a gold crown, and all the boys were calling her weirdo, weirdo. And, and she, she it didn't bother her. But now the crown is out of fashion. The, the point is, there's many, but the, what they did was that they infused in that jewelry power. So if I wear a crown, I'll get that power. If I wear a ring, I'll be invisible. Can you see? It's a lord of. The, can you see this word, lord? Who is the lord? The one who has it. Mawla. The word Lord in, in um, Arabic means Mawla. 
Mola means owner, ruler of the ring. Ultimately, who is the ultimate ruler of the ring? Who is the ultimate lord of the ring? Oh, come on. The I? Who, who is the I? The judge. No, no, no. Solomon. Not Solomon. Sauron. Someone's watching properly. <laughs> Sauron. Yeah, Sauron. Yeah. It's very close to the word Sauron, Sars. Susan. Sauron. I thought I'd just let that one in. Yes. The dude said that the author talking, he was fluent in Arabic. He was a linguist. He was what, sorry? There you are. You see, the satanic verses and books like this are not written, they are fronted by an author. But there is a huge <coughs> department behind it. And you know which department that is in government? I'll tell you. It's called the Department of Social Policy. They engineer such books. They engineer such initiatives. To, to, to orient the masses. What, is, what are these programs? You know, Big Brother. What are these? These are programs to, uh, 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 to, 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 to uh, indoctrinate the masses into a certain way of thinking. What is correct as a norm and what is incorrect as a norm. So there's a huge... I mean, if there's a BA degree in potterology, I'm waiting for the degree in Lord of the Rings. I don't know what to call it then. I can understand potterology, maybe ringology, or lordology. The point is, it's coming. If it was just a work of fiction, a one-off, well then, why would there be more? Because this is a series designed to educate us. And The Hobbit is very interesting. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm <coughs> excusing to. The Hobbit. Oh. Has it the Zulkanen traveled the earth? It's document creation creatures, yeah. So where I've already talked about this, there was hybrids, half human, half fish, which we call half human, half animal. What's a what's a hobbit? They've only gone up to the foot. They haven't gone beyond that. But you see, Zulkanen has it. The Zulkanen says, and the Quran says, he encountered a people. La yaf, uh, la biha. Anyone has a, a, a copy of the Quran? You should have the Quran out. It's barakah even to have it out in front of you. Qawmun la yafqahuna biha. Something like that, isn't it? Surah Kaf. Qawmun la yafqahuna He met a people. He didn't understand their uh, uh, language. And yet, Zulkanen interacted with all humans. But these were hybrids. Now, I, I, Lord of the Rings uh, uh, hints at Yajuj and Majuj. Where are Yajuj and Majuj made? Where are those armies working? Where? Above ground or underground? underground? You see? Underground. And not only that, now let me give you something which will really, you know, this. On the face of it, they're just fun and games, these movies. Journey to the uh, uh, central, central, central of the earth. Central. Let me give you a statistical reality according to Quran and Sunnah. What is the human population at this moment? Right. Approximately. Seven, seven billion. Okay, now, this is going to be the true test of your maths. As a ratio of one to ninety-nine, if one is seven, what's ninety-nine? In numbers, is if seven billion is one percent, so what is ninety nine as a ratio? Six hundred ninety. I only trust accountants. Six hundred thirty billion. Six hundred thirty billion. A journey to the end, uh, in, in middle of the earth isn't just a gimmick. It's preparing you. There is, if the data of 7 million is correct, according to 
Quran and Sunnah, there is 630 billion people living under the earth. Yes, we are not the only ones responsible for CFC gases. <laughs> we are not the only ones whose carbon footprint is destroying this earth. There is 600, so every one to, the Prophet said, mm -hmm. every one to, one human, 99 Yadud Madud. Who are Yadud Madud? They are essentially humans, Hobbit, essentially humans, but they are mutant humans, mutated humans. Shall I give you an example of that from Hadith? Yes, please. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, there's a, a, a Hadith to this effect, I'm not talking about the, uh, the, the Isnad of this Hadith, but there is a Hadith that whatever they will put in their mouth will digest. Whatever, even metal. Now, if you look at the Guinness Book of World's Rec World Records, I don't know why they call it the Guinness Book, but anyway, when I was a child, or as they say in Manfred, when I were a lad, I saw, and please do check this up, don't take my word for it, there was a man who used to eat metal. He even ate an aeroplane. And defies science. But science came back and said, how do we uh, uh, explain that this mic is made of metal, he puts it in his mouth and it's gone? The explanation given is that his saliva is so acidic. You know the saliva we have in our stomach? Hydrochloric acid? Yes, it's even more powerful than lithium. Sorry, could you repeat that? Even more powerful than hydrochloric acid. It's even more powerful than hydrochloric acid. Yeah. Even more powerful than hydrochloric acid. But if that hydrochloric acid came on our tongues, what, it, what would it do? Just burn, it. burn it, melt it. But look how Allah has kept such acidity, such severe level of acidity and regulated it. As well. so on in that. But this mutant human, his acidity comes to his saliva, regulates his saliva, if you study geography, which I didn't, I just watch National Geographic, <laughs> there are certain plants on this earth now that the acidic content of them is so high because of, of course, the environment that they are no longer edible because of the acidic content. I went to certain uh, islands uh, um, off Australia and there's certain fruits they say if you eat this, you will die because of the acidic content of it. But you can imagine Yajuj and Majuj consuming acidic. <coughs> the more down you go, the more acid there is. The acidic vegetation, acidic uh, uh, diet, so much so that their saliva contains so much acidity that whatever they eat. They will be indestructible. So Lord of the Rings there is wrong because that follows a biblical or Masonic uh, 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 um, prophecy that they will be weak or whatever. They will not be weak. You cannot, the, the human race, the one Isa alayhi salam who will annihilate the Jal, even he will not fight with Yajuj and Majuj. They are an indestructible force. The only way they will die, anyone know? Virus from heaven. Covid, no. Yeah. <laughs> anyone? Virus from heaven. No. That, there, that, that is one. Right? But there's another piece in this regard, yes? You get the illness in the next season. How will that illness come? Locusts. There will be a swarm of locusts. Maybe the arrows that Refer, is referred to in the other days. So it won't be necessary. These locusts will come and infection. Look at that. The concept <coughs> of infection is in Quran and Sunnah. That they are indestructible. Yeah. But only infection will be able to kill them. And that's of a locust. And I often ask myself, why a locust? Why not a wasp or a hornet? Why a locust? 
if you study the locust, you will see that there is more that meets the eye. Yeah. So what they have done is they have shown that look, we have an understanding of what things are, but we have presented it in the way that we, you know, it's like uh, in an infant school. I used to have a Jewish teacher. She used to tell the story of Ibrahim and Islam and Ishmael. She used to say, from her perspective, and I used to do this. And she said, why do you keep moving your head when I talk? I said, because this is what the version of women told. She said, well, this is the version I'm telling. I said, well, your version. So you see, when you watch a film, you don't say, <laughs> you say, oh. you're relaxing. That's the best time to catch you. Yeah. If so anyone tries to indoctrinate, indoctrinate you now, you're on high alert. When's the best time to catch you? Relaxing. That's what movies are designed to do, relax you. But the best mode of relaxation is this book. But we don't turn to it for relaxation. We only turn to it for the reasons I've already announced. But the relaxation that you get from this, so on and on. If only you were, if only you, uh, were able to... Uh, engage in the opium, the beautiful opium of this book. May Allah allow us to, 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 to engage with this book to be able to uh, smell the scent so that it changes our lives. Yes. Uh, what happened to the Hindu who was told to be Muslim? He became Muslim. It was his story. He, no, he read Kalima before he came down. Yeah. But that, because that was <coughs> under duress. <laughs> So now, for the record, he was told to do wusal and then told to. And he became a Muslim. Some great awliya were Hindu pundits. Even now, I read recently that uh, 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 um, there's many Hindus who are converting to Islam because of reading the Bhagavad Gita, the original manuscripts in which the Prophet was mentioned. Yes, one last question for the day. You mentioned us it's true, but you see, the, 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 the point is that uh, the inability of the nafs to switch off is a sign of the lack of la khofun alayhim wa la The inability to switch off <coughs> is a sign of lack of life. We are tamed with forces around us that are designed not to make us switch off. You know, wherever we go, we are responsible, we have liability, we have culpability. So we are always ticking, if I go here, I do this, I do this, you know, I'll be, I have to behave in this way. So we are, you know, we are imprisoned with these laws and regulations and ethics that we have to... So that's the starting point. But then on top of that, we have other forces that imprison us. And those forces don't allow us to switch off. When was the last time... And this is why we like to go on holiday. But the problem when we go on holiday is we seldom find that the switching off is always very, very limited. And even if you do manage to switch off there, it all comes back when you get back, you know, on the shores of the United Kingdom. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, I'm afraid this switching off, this is the biggest challenge. How can you switch off? That's why the first posture in Salah is takbir tahrima. That's the button. But that button doesn't work. <laughs> Why do they call it Takbir Tahrima? Anyone know? Tahrima. Takbir means the praise of Allah, which is haram. <laughs> the haram takbir. Why do we do this? Because when we do the haram takbir, takbir tahrima, we say now the dunya and its contents are haram for us. <laughs> Allah, I am here to exclusive. Takbir tahrima. That's the the thinking behind takbir tahrima so but the problem is that button doesn't work you know so that's all it is we are tuned that we need to press that button five times a day we do press it but it doesn't work so what happens 
to a button that doesn't work. You need to refer to the manual. The button doesn't work. As today, I hired a mitre soon. <laughs> and I couldn't find the button. And I didn't want to read the manual because I didn't have time on the building site. So I didn't have time. So what did I do? I found it. The person who supplied it to me. I haven't got time to read the manual. Where's the button? I can't press it. It's not working. Easy solution. Either find the manual, and if you can't find the manual, then find someone who knows the manual. Fas'alu ahl zikr. If you don't know, then find the people of Quran. Ahl of Quran. In kuntum la ta'alamun. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ashrafi al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen Awa Allah Azza wa Jal Make us true companions of the Qur'an Awa Allah allow us to spend a lifetime In your servitude In the servitude of your master Of your beloved Our master Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Awa Allah allow us the facility And the ability To lead a life in which we are True servants of you And your beloved Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Oh Allah Make us from the Ahlul Quran Oh Allah Allow our identity to be From the Ahlul Quran And allow uh, the Quran to be our Companion in this dunya In the qabr And in the hereafter Oh Allah Those of us who are The victims of khawf and huzan Allow us to Be alleviated by these Forces So that we can gain your proximity Amen. Oh Allah, you have said that you are closest to those who are ill. We profess before you and confess we are ill with these diseases of khawf and huzan. Oh Allah, alleviate us from these diseases. Amen. Oh Allah, the more that we have the, the, these diseases, you are close to the ill person. That's your promise and the promise of your beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, we confess to this illness. Oh Allah, through your proximity to us, oh Allah, alleviate us from these illnesses. Amen. Oh Allah, allow us to conduct lives under the banner of La Khawfun Alayhim wa La Hum Yazaroon. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa Ali wa Sahbihi Rahim. Wa Ahmad Bin Ahmad.